about your journey to hip hop? Let our audience know. How well, you know, it, it started actually, uh, it officially started in 1980. Okay. Uh, when I got my first job, I was only 18 years old and I was on a commercial radio station. They just got sold. And uh, so I started working there. And then they asked me if I was interested in doing a uh, show on Sunday nights where I played nothing but new music for two hours. Okay. And that, that kind of evolved into me playing new hip hop music mixed with R&B. And next thing I know, I got a lot of requests. People want to hear more rap, the more rap stuff than all the new R&B stuff. So I guess you can say I was the first guy on the West Coast to have an all rap radio show on a commercial radio station, not knowing that I was going to be the first one. But it started in 1980. Mm -hmm. um, so going through my history, I'm just making a long story short. Uh, in 1983, um, not knowing that we went to the same high school, I, I met Sir Mix a lot. Okay. And we established a relationship. By 1985, Sir Mix a lot, a guy named Ed Lock and I, we all started a record label called Nasty Mix Records. Uh, and this is coming out of Seattle. And uh, we ended up going gold and platinum. Mm -hmm. which was something really not heard of because we weren't from the Bronx and we definitely weren't from Compton. <laughs> we were from Seattle. <laughs> so that happened. And, you know, I've just been in radio, uh, man, for since 1980. Uh, I've been in a couple of motion pictures. Uh, one is a House Party 4. That's the one without Kid and Play. Uh, IMX was in it. But I had the funniest part because I played the gay pilot and boy, I tell you, it was so convincing. <laughs> but you said you had to even convince yourself. Now, before you take us fastly through your elaborate work ethic and contribution to the culture, I want to break it up some because although for you, that's been fast, but I need to remind you of how much that means to people like me, what work uh -huh. done. So let's start about you being the first DJ really to introduce an all rap show in Seattle called Fresh Tracks. And all right. that's when you were on 1250 K Fox. How wow. did that come together? I mean, you got to tell me, Ness, because that's really good stuff. And you really put hip hop on the map in terms of Seattle radio. And that's no front. How did you pull that off? Um, you know, just by trial and error, a lot of my influences came from listening to uh, New York radio, 92 WKTU, because my sister lived in New York and I spent my summers in New York and her best friend worked at 92 KTU. That was a station where DJs like the Latin Rascals, uh, Jellybean Benitas all started from there. So I kind of bit their idea. And I said, you know, what if I try that here on the West Coast? I wonder if people will like it because I knew how to mix and stuff on the turntables. And no one ever did that on the radio yet, as is, except for 92KTU. And so when I did that in Seattle, just my ratings, I just noticed the ratings kept going higher and higher and higher. Then when I started playing rap music, it kept going higher and higher and higher. And then all these labels from Def Jam, Russell Simmons, uh, Rick Rubin, all these people would call me up and say, hey, Ness, man, I got this new Tila Rock. I got this new Run DMC. Can you play for me? Because they knew I was the only one that could, would play it in Seattle. Nice. I, and I said, sure, I'll play it. And uh, you know what? And I guess that's how people knew of me because they knew I was the guy to go to. And I didn't just break rap. You know, I broke like uh, Evelyn Champagne King, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, uh, records from Michael Jackson. I mean, I've got tons of plaques in my, 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 my place, you know, show evidence if no one believes me. <laughs> but He's surrounded but, with plaques. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to brag, but, you know, I'm just so fortunate, you know. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, Lisa, I, I, I did not dream that this was going to happen in my life. All, all I knew is when my mom died when I was 18 from cancer, Wow. Rest her last, wow. yeah, her her last wish was to see me graduate from high school. She was really worried about my life, like what's going to happen to me. She thought I was going to maybe end up in jail somewhere, you know. But uh, it, if it wasn't for being on the radio, because I loved doing that, even though I got a paycheck for it, it didn't even feel like a job because it was fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that so that just really helped out a lot. And then 
you know, hooking up with Mixlot, you know, with the record label and and on and on. And uh, and we need to touch out about the martial arts because you start off the show about martial arts. You know, we, we, we should talk about that, too. Wow. Now, I wanted to ask you because I heard that you were you got your influence to become a DJ from Grandmaster Flash. Well, he was Tell uh, me about one, that. He was one of my influences. Just mm -hmm. you know, watching when I saw him in person doing these tricks on the turntables. You know, I, he had two copies of Herbie Hancock, Rocket, and Chic, Good Times, and Shannon, mm -hmm. Let the Music Play, and just how he manipulated both records on two turntables. Like, I don't know how he does that. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember seeing him per in person doing it. Mm -hmm. So the, that night after I saw him, I went home and I practiced from like midnight to six trying to copy what he did. But he he, he played a major influence uh, as far as being a DJ. But as far as the turntables, artists like the Black Rascals, mm -hmm. DJ Wizkid, Cameron Paul, uh, they also played a huge influence as far as me being a DJ on the turntables. Right. As a DJ on the microphone, my big influences included uh, the legendary Frankie Crocker, you know, Cat by Kim. Yeah. Uh, and I got to meet him, Mr. Magic from uh, New York, WBLS. Uh, nice. Yeah. So it was kind of cool, you know, uh, you know, looking up to these people when you actually meet them, you know, it's, it's like, a, wow, man, I met them. I'm going to be just like them. <laughs> <laughs> and look, you are definitely have exceeded in terms of what motivation that we get from other people when we see them do their craft. You did it the right way in the essence of looking at them, giving them the respect that they need and require in order to just give us little tidbits so that we can get better in the things we want to learn. So because you're such a great relatable person and able to channel that energy on to others, I'm sure it was not a problem to be shown different things and different people to share that with you. Because I mean, I just feel that from you naturally, that yeah. you give and give person. You know, and it's givers you know I mean? and <laughs> look, look, and it's givers, you know, things just starts happening. When you give, you definitely give back. 